topic is an orientation on using the new web price survey. A couple of things to keep in mind while I present today is the number one issue, which is that the price, prices that you enter will be averaged within your vendor peer group. And so the prices that you enter will not be the prices used for the NTE calculations. They will be used as part of an averaging algorithm to create NTE prices. Another thing to keep in mind is that I will be presenting from a test environment. And I've tried to make my data look as much like the data you will see when you go to the vendor price survey, but there are differences. And so you may see things like um, high, higher than expected prices or lower than expected prices. And also there may be some items on my survey that don't appear on your survey and vice versa because my survey was developed for the express purposes of giving this training. So this is the link to your vendor price serve to the vendor price to the vendor homepage Brian, where you will see your price base. Brian, you there? And I believe that Oh yes, I'm here. Uh, did you change off the first screen, the web price survey? Well, I have. Okay, it's not changing on here in this office. Now it's changed. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Um, so this you you're looking the slide you're looking at now is the home page for the vendor portal, where you will go to access your price surveys. So I believe most of you have already gone down this link and have registered yourself as part of the, uh, as a participant in the vendor portal. But I'll give just a light overview of how to register yourself for anybody who hasn't done that yet. Now the vendor portal, the online price survey is intended to replace your paper survey. And so. And the online price survey has some automated features to help you with your price entry. And the, and the vendor portal will communicate with you via email. And so the email that you register is very important. It's our main communication method for notifying you about the statuses of the prices you enter and any new price surveys that the WIC program needs you to fill out and submit. Also, the vendor portal will display some information on announcements and trainings, and I'll go over those at the end of today's presentation. So what do you do first? You register by setting up an account in the vendor portal. This is what you will see when you go to the vendor price survey. Let me switch over to you. So here I am at the vendor price survey where I'm able to register by pressing the register link. And you'll see that there's an arrow pointing to the register link here in case you don't see it on your screen without a little bit of help. Okay. And then you should fill in all of the fields presented and press register. Here's an example of the data filled in. It's particularly important for you to remember your email and your password so that you can continue to use the price survey over time. And also make sure that you have your send email reminders checkbox checked. This will tell us that you're, that you're wanting notification of upcoming price surveys and reminders that surveys are due. All of the vendors in Kansas and in southern Arizona also use the same survey, and they find that the email reminders are very helpful. So don't uncheck the box. Keep that checked and watch for survey information coming from the uh, WIC program. 
here's an example of a notification that you have a new survey to fill out. This is the name of the survey, and this is the date that your survey answers are due. And so by double-clicking on the vendor portal link, you will go to the website so you can see the surveys that you need to fill. So here's an example of really, this is the first step in getting to your survey. When you log on to the vendor portal using your email and password, you will go to a custom page that presents the surveys that you will need to fill out. And here's an example of the October 2016. And I've got this big blue arrow pointing out so you can't miss it. So um, I'm going to go back to the web page and show you what that looks like. switch over to this. Here we go. Now I've logged on and I can actually see that in my next pending price survey section, which is always at the top of your home page, are the surveys that are pending. And I can click this link to see the store that the survey is associated with and this link to actually see the survey itself. So I've got a, a, a shorter version of the survey here. And what I do is I go to the new price. Now if I had survey information on record, I would see my old prices here. But because we're starting this fresh, this part isn't filled out. That will show up for your next survey. And that will help you to remember what your last survey price entered, entered value was. So just enter the survey information here. And you can use your tab key to go from cell to cell. Now when I'm done filling out all of the price surveys, all of the prices for the survey and uh, items, I can then press submit to send this to the um, WIC program for them to review. Now, I also want you to know that your survey is much longer than the sample survey I just filled in. Your survey has uh, about 180 items, I think. Or, sorry, 80 items. And the vendor manager at the WIC program wants you to take your survey in sort of two steps. Step one will be to fill in the least expensive brands for these key items here, and then the most expensive price for these items below. So I'm going to unmute everybody and see if there are any questions so far. Okay, everybody, you've been unmuted, and I hear that somebody has some music in the background. If they could uh, turn that down for a few minutes, that would be helpful. Are there any questions about what you've seen so far? So I'm going to remute everybody to uh, ground out the background music. And um, encourage you to use the questions on your panel to submit any in typed version, the typed version. Okay, back to the slideshow. I need to scooch down to where I need to start drawing. So what happens after you submit your survey? After your prices have been submitted, 
the center manager at the WIC office will review the prices you submitted. And he or she may mark one or more as rejected. And if they do mark them as rejected, you will get an email back from the WIC office helping you to understand what's going on. And so it will name your survey and the price that it's due, and that one or more items have been rejected. And after you receive this email from the WIC office, please go back to the vendor portal, log in, and go back to your survey. Your survey will show which items were rejected. There will be a, a check mark next to the prices that aren't passing the WIC vendor manager's review. And the rejected item looks like this. And so you will be expected to go back to your survey and modify the price and resubmit it. So for every serve, for every item that has this exclamation point next to it, please pay careful attention and go in and see if perhaps you entered something incorrectly. Like for example here, what we see is $157 which looks more like a typo than an actual entry. And in this case, you would just be expected to change this value to 157 and press Submit. Then the WIC vendor will be able to review the prices again. Now, if there are more prices that he's subjecting to, you may get a phone call or an email from the vendor manager to talk about the item in more detail with the goal of reaching a price that is satisfactory to both you and the vendor and the WIC manager at the sorry the vendor manager at the WIC office. So, if there are a few things I would want you to remember, the key things are watch your email for notifications from the WIC office that there is a survey due. Log on to the vendor page. At vendor portal and go to the home page and look for surveys that you need to fill out. Once you submit your survey, the next big thing that you, the next big responsibility that's on your shoulders is to watch for price correction requests. And they come in the form of an exclamation point with a triangle around it. So when you have submitted or resubmitted a survey, you will get an email talking about the survey was successfully submitted. That just means that there was no problems in sending your prices to the vendor manager and that he or she will be able to see them using their system. This doesn't mean that they've been successfully accepted. That would be a whole other round of um, email and work with the vendor manager. So the vendor home page, let's go back to the actual uh, survey itself and the home page. I want to orient you to the different sections of the home page. This being by far the most important, that's why it's uh, large and on the top, at the top of the page so that you can definitely track on surveys that are currently in play. This update button, of course, is another important feature. I'll click it again for us to jump to the actual price surveys to price rows to enter. And then let's page down a little bit. Here's your basic account summary information. Again, you'll want to keep this up to date. And you can do that using the account management page. This is where you can change name, phone number, company, and email reminder information. Also here is a section for announcements from the vendor manager at the WIC program. And he will use this to notify you of uh, perhaps uh, information on upcoming changes in policy or changes, upcoming changes to the web portal itself. 
also there is information down here below on trainings that the WIC vendor manager has registered you for. And that will come, and this is just, it's not an uh, online registration page. Registration is something that actually takes place at the vendor manager's office itself. This is just a notification that you are registered for a class. And if you want to see all training events, you can go to this link, which shows past and future registration events. And so this is where you'll want to go to keep track of those vendor trainings that you are registered for. I'm going to go back to the slideshow and show you an example of a training reminder. Here is information on a training that you are scheduled for. That is one of the nice things about the portal is it's very good at keeping you abreast of due dates and reminders. And so if you, for example, here we have a reminder for an upcoming training. And as I've said before, there are also reminders for surveys and their due dates. And you will receive, if you haven't completed your survey, you will receive a reminder 15 days before it is due, and then again five days before it is due, and then again one day before it is due. And so the portal is doing its best to keep you informed of survey surveys that you have to fill out and submit. 